face room. It means everybody gets to know each other a little better. Also means we gotta be a little bit more careful. So with that in mind, this is uh, the session on improvisational speaking. And today, you have two people who I think you're gonna have a great time with. What do a World Series champion and a Toastmaster of the Year have in common? Well, they're here for you today. <laughs> okay? One of them is Ellen Schnur. I've known Ellen for a very, very long time. Ellen has gone to Second City, so she knows a thing or two about improvisation. She's a Toastmaster of the Year for this current year. And anyway, she's looking at me going, and you are. She's also a division governor currently. I can't remember which one you are. Central South. Central South, sorry. You guys split up all the three, so I'm my bad. Uh, and she has been a phenomenal. ETM yet or no? No. No, we're getting there. We're getting there. So you, that, now you've met Ellen. The World Series champion is Jim, Mr. Jim Mercer, who is Monsieur. a Mercer. I do. I screw up everything he does. No one gets so. it right. Nobody gets it right. But he got it right for quite a few seasons, playing with many Major League Baseball teams, including the New York Yankees, in which he was a member of their World Championship team. Ask him to see the ring. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's very, very cool. So with that in mind, I'm going to get done with my spiel so that they can start theirs. Ladies and gentlemen, Ellen and Jim. Tracks and Toastmasters, what are they? Leadership. Leadership and communication. And today we're going to play with those improv style. And we're going to bring some stories from the mound, that would be Jim, to help bring everything home. Uh, uh, <laughs> shall be left behind, even in this small room. We'll figure it out, we'll improvise, right? So we're all going to work together as a team, okay? Yeah, let's get started. Let's get started. So when Jim and I do our workshops for corporations and organizations, one of the things that we find happens a lot is that different departments have to do projects together. And what happens is that there's leaders in every, every um, uh, sorry, there's leaders in every department, thank you. We don't have departments in Toastmasters. <laughs> leaders in every department and followers of those leaders. So when you bring everyone together, it's really hard to figure out who's going to lead and who's going to follow. <laughs> in improv, we have to do that all the time. We have to give and take leadership. We call it the spotlight. So sometimes we take the spotlight and we own that spotlight. And then we give the spotlight to somebody else and we try and make them look good. Okay. And as a leader, in leadership in Toastmasters, we do that a lot as well. We give and take leadership a lot in our meetings, right? We have our Toastmaster, our general evaluator. Even when you're giving a speech, you own the spotlight. You're the leader for that moment. So what happens sometimes, though, is some people love to be a leader, right? Some people would rather not be a leader. Thank you. You go ahead, lead. To be a strong team, you need to have everybody good at both. So if you're not good at taking the spotlight, start to learn. Start to, start to take the spotlight a little bit. And then when you give it to someone else, make them look good. That's going to make a strong team at work, at Toastmasters, and in Prop. So what we're going to attempt to do right now, <laughs> and I emphasize attempt, is we're going to play an improv game called Bobsled. Now, this is where you come in. I need you to... We need strong leaders right here. Yeah, we need leaders. <laughs> I need you to get in groups of four. So put yourselves in group of groups of four. Go. Just figure it out. Groups of four.
interrupting conversations. I'm a terrible conversation interrupter in improv, okay? But if you hear me say freeze, help me so that everyone else hears it too. So say freeze along with me. I will be interrupting your conversations, but if we're going to get through this, we have to be good interrupters, okay? Raise your hand if you do not have a group of four. So we all are in these. Okay, raise your hands high if you're not in a group of four, because I'm sure we'll have a group of four if we do it. Okay, come on in. Here we go, we got four. Okay. And how many? Okay, now here's what you need to do, and I'm going to demonstrate that with you, so this is okay. So what I want you to do is in your group of four, I want you to pretend you're a bobsled. Okay? Freeze, everybody, freeze. Freeze. Thank you. All right, so you guys are a bobsled. So there's someone in the front, and then you can have the next person behind them put their hands on their shoulders, and so on and so on. So the, the last three have hands on shoulders, okay? So go ahead and do that. Get your hands on shoulders, okay? Hands on shoulders. bobsled one step at a time. So I'm going to say left, I want everyone to move their left foot. I'm going to say right, I want you to move your right foot. No more than that, okay? So just practice. So left, right, left, right, okay, squeeze. And what you're going to do is, it, it's going to be a miracle, you're going to maneuver in this room on your own without hitting anybody. So, once in a while, And listen to what's going on. Alright, so alright, so let's do that left. Okay, right. Okay, now keep moving as you can. Do your best. Just weave in and out. There's no right or wrong. We How many of you felt 
uncomfortable leading the group a little bit. I know I sometimes get uncomfortable. So we got a lot of leaders in this group. That's good. See? And sometimes it's uncomfortable, sometimes it's comfortable. What happened when you were switching places? Uh, <laughs> and what did you do with that? You just kept going. You made it work, right? Right. Pause in progress. Some of us, that's the case. So explain that. In other words, our team was to keep moving the pedal and stop. And so when you stop the process, things stop. Or we kept moving the switch. So if you do a change, basically, it's in the process. It may be a positive thing. Oh, good point. Did anyone hear that? No. 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 <laughs> What I said was, when we have a pause mid-project, you're not careful, there can be a stop. When you have a change, or a mid-project, you may cause a pause. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and if you keep working as a team, you can make still make it work, right? I yes. coordinated the change. I went to the left. The, top, the first person went left and the other one right, instead of bumping into each other to change. And that's oh. you got to use the learning. Yeah. Oh, so that's so interesting. So people were kind of bumping into each other, so you had to figure out what the rules would be, right? Because I didn't give you a lot of rules, right? <laughs> leadership and communication is usually on the field but if we have meetings just like everybody else at the Toastmasters business and a lot of times our leadership goes on in those situations because I know when we, we come together as a group it's catchers pitchers and a manager and a pitching coach and we're going over our competition so we're looking at the other team's lineup and we're going to decide how we're going to face them but what happens is if you get like a dictator you get a coach that's he knows everything he's been around has all the experience as a catcher same way we go to those meetings and they'll say, okay, how do you get out Alex Rodriguez? And I'll have their sheet of paper with their statistics and they'll say, throw high fastballs, low curveballs. And then somebody will raise their hand and go, you know, I've had, a, I've had real success throwing inside sliders to them. But then that coach will come out and say, hey, you know, that's a little risky. Let's just follow the plan. So no one else is going to raise their hand because they're going to get shut down. And then all 11 of those pitchers walk out of that meeting and they don't have a plan. They're like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to do it his way. And what does that what does that do to your confidence usually? If you have to do it somebody else's way, it kind of takes your confidence away. I played for a team, Tampa Bay Bell Rays, that were great at shared leadership. We had uh, Larry Rothschild was my manager. If anybody knows baseball, he's the pitching coach for the New York Yankees right now. Uh, Rick Williams was my pitching coach, and uh, my two catchers were John Flaherty and Mike DeFelice, and they did the best job because the, the media would start out the same, you know, a rod, fastballs up, curveballs down, and then they would say, anybody else have anything? Mm -hmm. And then that guy would say, okay, we could throw sliders in, and then somebody else would add to that idea. After you throw sliders in, we could throw change-ups away. But the whole point, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, every person from the manager to the lowest rookie had an opinion, had an idea. So when they came out of that meeting, everybody felt like they had their own plan, even though it was 11 different people, and it was shared leadership. And that was the most important thing, is that when you share leadership, you get more ideas, but also your whole team's engaged because they feel like they're the part of the team. And this is a great team so far. I was so impressed that all of you were able to do bobsled in here. I looked at took one look there went, no way. <laughs> you made it work, so that's fantastic. So the second track in, or first, however you want to look at it, 
in Toastmasters is what? Besides leadership, uh, it's communication. 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 And that's what we're going to talk, work on next. It's communication. But we're not going to talk about the part that Toastmasters is so great at, and that is how to craft a speech and the words to use. We focus on the nonverbal parts of communication. And one of the tricks to nonverbal communication that Jim and I find for sure is that voice in your head. You know that voice I'm talking about, the one that says, oh my God, don't do that. They will think you're an idiot, right? <laughs> The one that stops you. Oh, so speak on. Yes, so we're going to actually do an exercise where we are going to play with that. So how we're going to do that, I think, is we're going to split into two ovals, okay? That's good. I think that's the best way that we're going to do So we'll do one oval circle here and one oval circle there. But first, Jim and I are going to demonstrate the game. It's called Soundball, all right? So see this ball? Right? We'll have one ball for each of you, don't worry, we brought it up. So, okay, so I'm going to throw my ball to Jim, and when I throw the ball to Jim, I'm going to make any sound at all, some sound while I throw it. So, I he's going to catch it, but when he catches it, he's going to catch it with my sound. hi you Just like that. <laughs> okay, so he caught the ball, now he's going to take that ball, and he's going to make his own sound and throw it to somebody brand new. Okay, I'll, I'll be George. I'm Splash! Oh, <laughs> I got the way I You got the way she took it anyway. So, so then I, I mean you would go, Splat! Or, no, I would go, Splat! And catch it, thank you. I failed, thank you. So, we fail a lot in improv, right? Because if a mistake is not really a mistake if you learn from it, right? I always like to throw that in. Everybody fails, everybody makes mistakes and screws up, and if you own it and move on, it's not a mistake. So, or a failure. So anyway, we're going to get in two ovals and we're going to play sound ball. Jim's going to coach one side, I'll coach the other. And we're going to make some sounds. So go ahead. Uh, how about this line we're separating? Right All right, yeah. So this side, let's make a big oval, best we can. Right, I think we can really do skinny this. Oval. We might have to make it, I'm not sure. The short ones are the best. Oh, the second time. All right, no, you know what? We need four. Let's make four circles. Circle here, circle there, circle there. Yeah, that's probably better. Can we four circles. circles. Time to okay. Right here. Circle, circle, and circle. Can we get another circle? No, I might not get it. It's going to be good, okay? Excuse me. Can we
How many of you are thinking really hard, oh my god, what sound should I make? How many of you are probably making a much bigger deal out of the sounds you were making than you really should have, right? Yeah. So you have this voice in your head that was telling you all these things, right? It's your judge, you're your critic. Is it true that you somebody else made a better sound than you? No. Is it really true? No. no. Not necessarily. Did you have a really stupid sound? Maybe, maybe not. So that inner voice, that voice that we take as truth, that voice that judges our lives and tells us what to do, is not always correct, right? It's pretty arbitrary, actually, especially when it comes to whether or not we're worried about how we're going to look. So I want you to remember that next time you feel uncomfortable and your voice is screaming at you, no, don't do that, you'll look like a fool, say, will I really? I mean, question that voice, start questioning that voice, it'll really make a difference in your nonverbal communication, which is so important in life and at Toastmasters. Yeah, this is my favorite topic, I love the negative voice, because I know I had it throughout my whole career, and I, it's totally universal, you have it, especially in Toastmasters when you start off or right, giving your first speech business, anything else, but I remember in my career, that negative voice was there, you know, I guess 25%, 50% of the time. You know, I'd wake up and think, your fastball's not good, your screwball's not good, Derek Jeter's hot, he's going to hit you. You know, all these things are going in my head, and I can actually look at my career, I'd look back and I saw some stats, and I would pitch like eight, ten games in a row without giving up a run, and I would give up two or three runs and lose a game, and those games following that, they weren't that great. There was a couple times I'd give up runs, it was because I'd get that negative voice in my head from losing, and then I would kind of carry it forward. And then once I got over it, then I would start doing well again. Well, I want to give you a tool that I learned, because this happened early in my career, but later in my career, I learned how to overcome that. And I developed what I call the ABCs of confidence. So I woke up every morning and I A, assessed my emotions. I realized where I was, because usually when you wake up, that's where it starts, right? All of a sudden in your head, you start thinking. Well, if, it, if your emotions are positive, more than likely, you're going to be okay, the voice won't be that loud, you'll be all right, but if it's negative, that's when that voice starts going, it gets really loud in your head. So you have to find something, and everybody's different, what you can do to assess those emotions and then deal with them. So, I don't know, it could be a mantra, visualizing success, exercise, yoga, whatever it is, find out what it is, but the most important thing is recognizing your emotions every day and practicing. Then when you face your adversity, very simple, be is breathe, because a lot of times we get so anxious, we lock up, I know when I was more so at the podium than on the mound when I first joined, I was like, oh my god, I did like, this speech and it was just like, you could feel the tension, you're not breathing. So just take that, those big breaths, and then you loosen up physically and emotionally, and you're able to perform better. And the last one is just see, clear your voice. Right? Just simple, clear that voice, because you've already planned, practiced, and prepared, there's nothing else you can do at that time. Right? Everything's done. There's nothing you can do besides clear that voice that's telling you that you can't. So you have to realize that voice, the only thing that voice really is, it's either a historian or a prophet. Right? It's a historian that's telling you things that happened in the past while you're going to fail, or it's telling you the consequences of the possibility of failing. So that voice is really nothing in the now. So it comes down to just being engaged and get rid of that voice, and that's how you find more success. about Jim that a lot of people don't know is that Jim was born with a club foot when he was born. <laughs>
Toy Story. He's different characters in every Pixar movie. So he shows up in a workshop, and it was great to have him. And he asked if he could say something about Midway to him. Oh, well, yeah, please. So he said, this is really great because at Pixar, we use these same principles to be successful as a company and to make successful movies. And what I know about John Ratzenberger is that he is the epitome of successful nonverbal communication. His voice is his instrument, okay? That's why he gets asked to do so many movies. He's been in Star Wars movies, everything, because they love his voice and the way he's able to emote. So in Toastmasters, that's one of the things we really want to practice is we have the comfort zones, right? So when I joined Toastmasters, my comfort zone for emoting or for volume, different volumes was about this much, okay? John Ratzenberger's is from the floor to probably the moon, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to get back in our circles, and we're going to practice using our, emo our first we're going to practice with volume. Well, what time is it, Jeff? It is 11 morning. What, 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 what time are we supposed to be done? No. Uh, no. Oh, so we got till noon. Okay, great. So, okay, so we're going to practice our, our volume first. So I'm going to explain it, and then you can get back into your circle. One time, I just want to say one thing first, oh, because you are just talking about the negative voice, and when Cliff showed up at our session, that negative voice just went loud in my oh, head. Uh, I, I, I thought, okay, he's an improv, improvisationalist, he's an actor, and I'm thinking, oh my God, he's way better than I am. I'm doing this session, I'm going to be horrible, it's not going to be as good and finally recognized those emotions and dealt with it and went on to have a great session. But the point is, if I didn't deal with those emotions, I wouldn't have done well, and then Alan probably would fire me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had the same thing. And when I started talking, I almost, I just didn't even know what I was saying at first. And I'm like, oh, come on, this isn't about me, it's about, it's about the group. So, yes, that voice in your head is crazy. So what we're going to do is we are going to get back in our circle, and we are going to say a phrase. That phrase is, I am a Toastmaster. And I'll say that, right? I am a Toastmaster. We're going to start with one person in the circle. You guys can decide who starts. And you're going to start at volume one. So volume one might be something like, I am a Toastmaster. Something very quiet. We're going to work our way one person up at a time. So next person will be volume two, three, four, up through, up through ten! Okay? Right? And then you'll go nine, eight, seven, six. Actually, you know what we'll do? Just to make it easy, we'll go from 10 to 1 again. So that everybody, and just keep going around the circle, 1 through 10, practicing the different volume levels with I am Toastmasters. Everyone clear? Yes. Okay, get back in your circles and pick a lead, pick a starting person and go. Okay, all right. All right. I am a Toastmaster. 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 Seven, I am a Toastmaster. Seven, eight, I am a Toastmaster. Seven, eight, I am a Toastmaster. Nine, I am a Toastmaster. Nine, I am a Toastmaster. Nine, I am a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. Eight, I am a Toastmaster. Seven, I am a Toastmaster. Six, I am a Toastmaster. Five, I am a Toastmaster. Four, I am a Toastmaster. Three, I am a Toastmaster. I'm a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. I am a I am a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. I am a Toastmaster. I am a 
Oh, I do this in all my kids' classes, and I love to do it in my adult classes too. So on the count of three, I want tens from everybody. I am a Toastmaster. So again, on the count of three, ten. Level ten, all of you. I am a Toastmaster. We're going to stop that business meeting in its tracks, right? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Again, we have our comfort level. How much range of emotion can we show? Okay, so mine was this big when I first started Toastmasters and improv, and now I can I can get pretty emotional. <laughs> so the key is when you practice, it's fake. You feel fake practicing, but you can't get better at it until you practice. So yeah, you're going to be faking, but when you get up on stage, you're going to use real emotion. Okay. So we're going to practice our emotions, 1 through 10. So we're going to say, I'm a Toastmaster. So we're going to use the emotion. So, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. I heard the voices so loud. So we're going to do 1 through 10 emotion. And um, we're going to say, I'm a Toastmaster. I'm going to pick an emotion. Do you want to give your, tell us your? Yeah, sure. We'll yeah, go for it. So as far as emotions, they're, they're used in different ways. So as, when you're a Toastmaster, you have to be more emotional. But sometimes you might have to be less. When I'm on the mound pitching, and I'm having a particular bad game, say the base is loaded, the team's coming back, and I'm not feeling good. If I'm out on the mound, what, what happens if that next hitter is coming up and the catcher throws me the ball back and I kind of snap at it and I'm walking my head down, I'm muttering to myself, I'm yelling, and I get back on the mound, my shoulder is slumped, and I'm like, pull all my cheeks out. What is that hitter thinking? Oh, yeah. He's ready. He wants to bat. He's going to hit one back in my head. <laughs> but if I get on that mound, you know, the guy's going to play the snake. The ball, I get back on there. I'm glaring at the sign. I'm just looking at him like, I'm ready. Let's go. I take away his power. Right? He doesn't have, he doesn't look at me like, I lack confidence. And it's that way in everything. You have to figure out what that emotion is. If you're on the, if you're a Toastmaster, you're up there and your, your eyes are darting around and you're just kind of talking the monotone voice, and no matter what you say, it's not going to be interesting to somebody else. In mean, business, the same thing. Sales, you're selling yourself. So that emotion really helps you sell yourself to other people. Thank you, Jim. All right, so now we're going to do emotions 1 to 10 through 10. So you're going to say your number first, and then say that. So I'm going to pick a tougher emotion, one that's not quite so easy, and it's going to, you're going to have to fake it till you make it, just so you get some practice in. So I'm going to use fear, okay? So one fear would be, I'm a Toastmaster because I'm not afraid, right? And 10 would be, oh, I'm a Toastmaster! Or something like that, okay? So you feel that fear for number 10. So, and varying scales in there, okay? So this is fun, I promise you, and step out of that comfort zone. Step past what you usually could do. Go ahead and go. All right, we're starting. I am I'm not afraid to start. I'm I'm one. One. one, start with one, yes. Yeah. Oh, Say your number. Two. <laughs> Two. 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 I'm a Toastmaster. Five. I'm a Toastmaster. What number are we on? I'm a Toastmaster. Toastmaster. Ten. Ten. I am a Toastmaster. You're nine. Nine. Okay. 
Nine, I'm a Toastmaster. Eight, I'm a Toastmaster. Seven, I'm a Toastmaster. Eight, I'm a Toastmaster. 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 So who wants to demonstrate a 10? Right. <laughs> 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 